I'm Jane Radigal. I'm a game designer. Uh, I've been making games online now for 10 years, and uh, my goal for the next decade is to try to make it as easy to save the world in real life as it is to save the world in online games. So I've started to think about what these games are making us virtuosos at. Here are the four things I came up with. The first is urgent optimism. Okay, think of this as extreme self-motivation. Urgent optimism is the desire to act immediately to tackle an obstacle combined with the belief that we have a reasonable hope of success. <laughs> Gamers always believe that an epic win is possible and that it's always worth trying and trying now. Gamers don't sit around. Okay, gamers are virtuosos at weaving a tight social fabric. There's a lot of interesting research that shows that we like people better after we play a game with them, even if they've beaten us badly. And the reason is it takes a lot of trust to play a game with someone. We trust that they will spend their time with us, that they will play by the same rules, value the same goal, they'll stay with the game until it's over. And so playing a game together actually builds up bonds and trust and cooperation, um, and, and we actually build stronger social relationships as a result. Blissful productivity, I love it. You know, there's a reason why the average World of Warcraft gamer plays for 22 hours a week, kind of a half-time job. It's because we know, when we're playing a game, that we're actually happier working hard than we are relaxing or hanging out. We know that we are optimized as human beings to do hard and meaningful work, and gamers are willing to work hard all the time if they're given the right work. Finally, epic meaning. Gamers love to be attached to awe-inspiring missions, to human, planetary-scale stories. So just one bit of trivia that helps put that into perspective. Um, so you all know Wikipedia, biggest wiki in the world. Second biggest wiki in the world, with nearly 80,000 articles, is the World of Warcraft wiki. Five million people use it every month. They have compiled more information about World of Warcraft on the internet than any other topic covered on any other wiki in the world. They are building an epic story. They are building an epic knowledge resource about the world of Warcraft. Okay, so these are four superpowers that add up to one thing. Gamers are super empowered, hopeful individuals. These are people who believe that they are individually capable of changing the world. And the only problem is they believe that they are capable of changing virtual worlds and not the real world. That's the problem that I'm trying to solve. Um, there's an economist named Edward Castronova whose work is brilliant. He looks at why people are investing so much time and energy and money in online worlds. And he says, we're witnessing what amounts to no less than a mass exodus to virtual worlds and online game environments. And he's an economist, so he's rational. And he says, <laughs> <laughs> not like me, I'm a game designer, I'm exuberant. But he says, he says that this makes perfect sense because gamers can achieve more in online worlds than they can in real life. They can have stronger social relationships in games than they can have in real life. They get better feedback and feel more rewarded in games than they do in real life. So he says, for now, it makes perfect sense for gamers to spend more time in virtual worlds than the real world. Now, I also agree that that is rational, for now, but it is not, by any means, an optimal situation. We have to start making the real world work more like a game. So I take my inspiration from something that happened 2,500 years ago. These are ancient dice made out of sheep's knuckles, right? Before we had awesome game controllers, we had sheep's knuckles. And uh, these represent the first game equipment designed by human beings. And if you're familiar with the work of the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, you might know this history, um, which is the history of who invented games and why. Herodotus says that games particularly dice games, were invented in the kingdom of Lydia during a time of famine. Apparently, there was such a severe famine that the king of Lydia decided they had to do something crazy. People were suffering, people were fighting. It was an extreme situation. They needed an extreme solution. So, according to Herodotus, they invented dice games and they set up a kingdom-wide policy. On one day, everybody would eat. And on the next day, everybody would play games and they would be so immersed in playing the dice games because games are so engaging and immerse us in such satisfying, blissful productivity, they would ignore the fact that they had no food to eat. And then on the next day, they would play games, and on the next day, they would eat. And according to Herodotus, they passed 18 years this way, surviving through a famine by eating on one day and playing games on the next. Now, this is exactly, I think, how we're using games today. We're using games to escape 
real-world suffering. We're using games to get away from everything that's broken in the real environment, everything that's not satisfying about real life, and we're getting what we need from games. But it doesn't have to end there. This is really exciting. According to Herodotus, after 18 years, the famine wasn't getting better, so the king decided they would play one final dice game. They divided the entire kingdom in half. They played one dice game, and the winners of that game got to go on an epic adventure. They would leave Lydia, and they would go out in search of a new place to live, leaving behind just enough people to survive on the resources that were available, and hopefully to take their civilization somewhere else where they could thrive. Now, this sounds crazy, right? But recently, DNA evidence has shown that the Etruscans, who then led to the Roman Empire, actually share the same DNA as the ancient Lydians. And so, recently, scientists have suggested that Herodotus' crazy story is actually true. And geologists have found evidence of a global cooling that lasted for nearly 20 years that could have explained the famine. So this crazy story might be true. They might have actually saved their culture by playing games, escaping to games for 18 years, and then been so inspired and, and knew so much about how to come together with games that they actually saved the entire civilization that way. Okay, we can do that.